Chapter 26, The Brat Enclosure. In the kitchen, cooks were busily pr processing food, mostly vegetables, and servers were laying out banana leaves for plates. Groups of men and women drifted in, seated themselves, and were given rice and stew. I think we should wait until we get back to the hovercraft to eat, said Cienfuegos, putting Listen on, onto the ground. Everything is balanced in this place. I don't know if they have enough food for visitors. I wouldn't touch that crap anyway, said Listen. The, stew, the stew consisted of grasshoppers and, and caterpillars and a thick, gluey sauce with chopped up carrots and onions. The dinners ate, or the diners ate with gusto, using their fingers. They could have as many helpings as they liked by raising a hand. A server would hurry over and refill the banana leaf. Matt watched them. Excuse me, he began, on the conversation. The diners ignored him. Excuse me? He repeated, where are the children? It bothered him that the only child he'd seen was listen. A woman looked up. You must be newly emerged from dormancy. Everyone knows they're in the brat enclosure. She gestured at the door. Those dormancy graduates, a man said, shaking his head. Their brains don't wake up for weeks. Do children ever leave the bright enclosure? asked Matt. Not if I can help it, the woman laughed. The others seemed to enjoy the joke, too. We take turns watching them, the man explained. It's a tiring to chase after pre-humans, and we prefer to keep them corralled. I'm a visitor from the outside and don't know anything, said, the ma said Matt. Please tell me what you mean by dormancy. He's dreaming. Dreaming. Nobody lives outside, someone remarked. Poor Bobo. He must be from, from the outer ecosystems, perhaps t Tundra, said the woman. I've heard they're not too bright. For shame. They're all Gaius children, scolded another woman. All Gaius children are blessed, murmured the others, as though this were a ritual response. The men and women went back to feeding. The job of immatures is to play, to learn, to love Gaia, said a man, taking pity on Matt's ignorance. They don't work, but when they reach the age of 14, they are put into a dormant phase for a year or so. A knowledge of tasks they must perform as adults is fed into their brains. It's very intense. And dormants take a while to, to recover from it. You probably were from it. You probably went through through it recently, and that's why you think, and that's why you think straight. Don't worry, you'll get better soon. Everybody does before the first mating season. I remember those days," said an older man. He wiped thick bug infested gravy off his chin with a finger and licked off the results. I was allowed to produce three offspring because Gaia took the first one to herself. I always wondered which ones were mine when I tended the brat herd. Not that it mattered. All were children of Gaia. All Gaia's children are blessed, murmured the group. They started a discussion of past mating seasons. Matt was aware of Sanfuegos watching him with a wicked smile. I only wanted to find out about the children, he protested. Me too, cried Listen, and before anyone could stop her, she ran over and threw open the door, and, and laughter poured out. Beyond was a vast space filled with gentle hills and reed-shadowed shadow, pools. Flowering bushes surrounded the perfect lawns, where children of all sizes, from toddlers to the early teens, engaged in every sort of activity. Babies were being rocked in cradles by adult caretakers. Children of Listen's age were making mud pies. Older ones observed animals and plants under the watchful gaze of teachers. Still others played games or, or splashed in pools or climbed trees. They shrieked for the pure joy of shrieking. Adults in white tunics gravely comforted those who had fallen down or had been upset. Some of the smaller children were asleep in beds lined up under trees. Matt felt a lump in his throat. So many, all perfect with no deadness in their eyes. They were loved. They were wanted. 
They were happy. Happy. Where did you come from? Said the, care said the caretaker from the enclosure, sweeping the listing up in, her in his arms. You're too little to be running around by yourself. She screamed, and Cienifogos reacted instantly, snatching the little girl from the man's grasp. She's a visitor. She's from outside. We're leaving now. He slammed the door in the face of the startled caretaker and said, Come along, you little prehumans. We have a hovercraft to catch. Leaving was far easier than coming in. A shuttle cart from exit took them to the room where their clothes were. After changing, a door, after changing, a door opened, and they found themselves outside next to Holoport. Viti, go away, shouted Sinfuegos, scaring off a coyote that was sniffing around the, the door of the hovercraft. You'd like some al tacos, wouldn't after the fleeing animal. The jefe produced a bottle of water and sandwiches for all of them. Listen was so tired, she started crying. Cienfuegos unrolled a foam mattress in front of the owl cages and told her to lie down. I forgot how short your legs are, Chiquita. I'm not used to little kids. You, you rescued me, she sniffled. That man was going to lock me up in the bright enclosure. I'd never see, I'd never see Bonguinea again. She broke into lo loud sobs, ex exactly like her night terrors that had awakened Matt. Don't cry. Please don't cry, he said. His hand trembling over the distraught girl as though she was were a flame he dared not touch. Oh, damn all microchips. Damn everything. Cienfuegos hurled himself from the hovercraft and Cienfuegos hurled himself from the hovercraft and disappeared among the mesquite trees. It was so sudden and unexpected that Listen was stopped in mid howl. She stared at the empty door, still shaking. Matt scooted over and held her as he'd seen the adults hold unhappy children at the, in, the black, in the brat enclosure. It's all right, he said, rocking her back and forth. People like San Fuegos are warriors. They don't know how to be gentle. He's like the coyote, always running, and sometimes he bites. But trust me, he's not angry at you. He's angry at the microchip in his brain, Matt thought. Something about listen upset him. I wonder what it was. The little girl sucked her thumb and watched the door. Eventually, she stretched out on the mattress and fell asleep. Cienfuegos didn't return, and Matt worried about what to do. He couldn't fly such a complicated hovercraft. He checked the water in the owl cages, and they fluffed their feathers at him. He pulled the door closed. Who knew what was lurking outside? When Listen woke up, he told her one of Celia's stories about how Noah put all the animals in a boat and saved them from a flood. How big was this boat? Listen asked suspiciously. Very big, Matt said. Shut up and pay attention, he continued with a tale, explaining that, that only two of each could uh, explaining that only two of each kind could go. All the rest drowned. Is that what happened to the dinosaurs? Said the little girl. Yes, Noah couldn't f fit the dinosaurs in. They swam and swam, but eventually they got tired and sank. Matt said, improvisingly. He hadn't heard the story for years and was surprised at how good it made him feel. He remembered Celia's serious face where he lay with his stuffed toys. Noah sent out a crow to see if there was any dry land around, said Celia. You know how selfish crows are. They don't care about anyone but themselves. So this one found a cornfield and stayed there. She didn't like crows because they raided the garden behind the house. And the crows didn't return. Noah sent out a dove, said Matt now. Was it a white winged dove? Listen asked. He remembered that she'd been stuffed full of facts by Dr. Rebus. It didn't have a scientific name, he said. It was a lady dove called Blanca Luz, and her husband was called El Guapo, and they had a nest with six baby chicks. I don't believe that, the little girl said. How do you know? You weren't there. Matt finished the story, and Listen announced that she was hungry. 
He searched and found two more sandwiches, which he divided between Listen and Marisol. He divided between Listen and Marisol. That they had enough water for several days, but no more food. He told Marisol to curl up on the foam mattress with Listen, and he kept watch from the pilot's chair. What, what he would do if a lion got inside, he couldn't imagine. As often happened in the desert, the temperature dropped 40 degrees after dark. Matt searched further and found thermal blankets he used to cover the girls and the owls. The birds began a mournful hooting. Their feet scratched the bottom of the cages, while outside an extra excited bark told Matt that the coyote was back. He could hear the beast scuffing around the edge of the door. Tomorrow I'll have to turn the owls loose, he thought. I'll take Marisol and listen back to the biosphere except that he didn't know the combination for opening the door. Could he, could he bang on the walls? Would the inhabitants even notice? He heard a thump and a yelp from outside. I'll kick you so hard you'll split, you'll spit out shoelaces, swore San Fuegos. The man threw open the door. Why didn't you turn on the outside light? I couldn't see anything in the dark. Matt was so relieved he didn't take offense. I didn't know how. Tomorrow, I'll teach you. You might as well learn to fly, too. Good. You looked after the girls and the livestock, and I see you were standing guard like a real man. Move over. I'll do the driving. Matt happily vacated the seat. You were standing guard like a real man. Played over and over in his head like a piece of music. He'd done the right thing. He was worthy to be patron. He smiled into the darkness as the hovercraft took off and didn't worry that Cienfuegos said not another word until they arrived in Ajo. Hey, you guys, if you've enjoyed this, if um, please give me a like or um, please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. My apologies for not my my, my apologies for not uh, updating for so long. I started a new job recently and I'm working anywhere from 50 to 70 hours a week um with my new job and my apologies um i do have a brand new contributor uh, her name is uh helen and you will be seeing uh videos from her from time to time um and i will hope to hopefully continue updating uh the lord of opium at least once a week maybe once every two weeks thank you so much you guys